Hello and welcome to episode 164 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is November 21st, 2022. And as promised, I'm wearing my new Go Big or Go Gnome pullover, but I'm also wearing sort of the complete gnome outfit. <laughs> but as I usually start with my uh, accessory, I'll start with my shawl. This is um, a fairly old shawl that I've shown on the podcast before, uh, but it's a very beautiful one and I thought the, um, the colors sort of go with the gnomes in the pullover, so that's why I chose it today. And the pattern is called Dipped in Diamonds. And back then I was able to test knit the pattern. It's a beautiful, big triangular shawl and it has a knitted on fringe edging thingy. <laughs> so I'm not a fan of those classic fringes where you have to cut the yarn, but these are knitted at the same time as the shawl. And um, so I was really, I really like that. You actually start, I think, with those uh, things down here. And then the shawl is knitted from the tip to the widest part, which is why the colors sort of go, have these lines, but the pattern has this V shape. And one of the patterns is this um, very lacy pattern, which sort of looks interesting on both sides. And I keep forgetting which is supposed to be the right side and which is supposed to be the wrong side because both sides are actually really nice. And then um, the second pattern has is this beaded section. And again, I think the pattern is interesting on, in, interesting on both sides. And the interesting part about the placement of the beads is that some of the beads show more on one side and those are almost hidden. And then when you turn it round, the other beads are more clearly seen. Um, so that, that really makes it interesting. And then knitting this way means you, you switch between those patterns and then you uh, keep adding sections to the shawl. So then you do the lace pattern, the beaded, lace, beaded, lace, beaded, and so on um, until you decide it's big enough. You can actually go, I think, as long as you want. You could technically start another beaded section if you wanted. But I think this is the size that the pattern gives. And um, as I te tested it, I um, did it as per pattern. Yeah, but that's the shawl I'm wearing today. But now to the pullover. And the pullover actually does make all the colors look funny. But I don't mind. <laughs> anyway, so this is the book go big or go no pullover that I had finished knitting last week and uh, then I washed it. I did not actually block it. I just laid it out flat to dry and but I still think that the the stitch definition or the just the fact that the stitches look a lot more even now and also the color work is now lying completely flat compared to the wonky look it, ha it still had last time. I um, Filmed the, I showed the pullover on the video and, and washing, just washing a garment makes a huge difference, I think especially with the color work. So um, you can still see all the decreases. I guess you can also see all the short row shaping, but I think that's okay. It's just part of the pattern. It's very regular. You can see it's not a mistake. Um, yeah, and this is what the, what the pullover looks like. It was really... Everybody said it looked so small while I was knitting it, but it's just how small I am. It's the perfect length, I think, for a pullover of mine that's not super long. Um, yeah, the sleeves have the perfect length. T-shirt I'm wearing is just a tiny bit longer in the sleeves, but that's okay. Yeah, and then, of course, the Go Big or Go Gnome hat, which I knit as a gauge swatch for the pullover. So I knit the hat with the same needles that I use for the pullover, which means the hat is knit at a looser gauge than I would usually use for a hat. But it's fine. It's very soft. It's a bit, it's not too big. It's just fairly wide, but then it has this slouchy look, which I think is okay. And it just works perfectly with the pullover. And of course, my, I think it was July, my July gnomes, I was uh, ill part of July, so I didn't have that much time for knitting as usual. So I decided to go for the 
smallest gnomes there are for this year of gnomes. So um, this is the same yarn that I use for the hat and for the pullover. So it's a perfect match for all three together. And in a minute, I'm going to show you something else. That's a perfect match, but let me just put my shawl back on. As I said, I, I never know which is supposed to be the right and which is the wrong side. But anyway, so yeah, so that's the gnome outfit. That's what I'm wearing today. And um, I will link all the projects underneath the video. There I link to the original patterns just in case you want to knit something I'm wearing. But on to finished objects. So the next point in my videos is always to finish objects. And I finished my November gnome. And as we're talking about gnomes, I decided to show uh, that particular gnome as my next, uh, as my first finished object. object. Um, I have several finished objects a day. But the November gnome, as I told you last time, uses the same yarn as the hat, the earrings and the pullover. So these two are sort of related. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly the pullover gnomes and the uh, and the November gnome are very related. So this is exactly this gnome. I think the beard's a bit shorter, but I think with time it will get a bit longer. And um, this will not be the last time I'm showing you this gnome because although he's technically finished now, I am going to change something, and that means I will show it again next time. Um, as I said before, this is um, one of the birthday presents I made for my sister's birthday um, a week ago. And um, she really likes it. She loves the beard. She loves the hat. But um, she thinks he's a bit tall. And because I didn't put anything heavy into the bottom section, he's absolutely incapable of standing. So if you're really careful, he will stand for a few minutes. But if you just look at it too hard, <laughs> He will fall over. So I promise I could open it again to put something heavy inside to make him stand a bit more securely. And then we decided if I'm going to undo the um, the bottom anyway, I would just make him a bit shorter. So my sister said she would prefer the gnome to be just a little shorter and then more, um, I don't know, even cuter. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, that's what she likes. So I'm going to redo the bottom of the gnome and that's why I think I'll just show him again next week and I'll show you uh, what size he has then and um, yeah and then he can stay with me for a bit longer until I finished all the gnomes for the year of gnomes and I can make a group photo and all those things and then he can move in with my sister. Uh, he will probably be accompanied by the February gnome. Um, she really liked that one so those two will probably move to her place and um, Sending two gnomes to her place means they won't be lonely. Yeah, so that's the plan. Um, that was my first finished object for today. The second is another hat. So um, I finished the Poka Poka hat or the sunshine hat that I knit from the book as uh, a pattern out of the book Moon and Turtle or Turtle and Moon, I can never remember. But as I said, it's linked underneath the video. And one half was knit with this hand dyed yarn by Voldacke, and one half is knit in this um, beautiful mohair silk yarn by um, Hansa Farm. And as I'm wearing a hat anyway, and my hair doesn't look <laughs> too good anyway, I will show you what the hat looks like on me. And I just love it. It's so soft and so warm and squishy, and I really, really love the bright color. Um, the sunshine it brings to my shop and this is one way uh, I can wear the hat I if I wanted to wear it without the brim I could do that I could let it stand up like that but that looks a bit silly <laughs> but if I pull it down like this I'll have a completely yellow hat and uh, and then I can do both styles the other way if I want the soft mohair silk against my skin this is the silly way to wear it <laughs> <laughs> and this is the slouchy way and then it's all rainbows or I can um, wear it with the brim folded and I think this is the way I will probably wear it most so you can see quite a few rainbows and 
but you can see a bit of the mohair and what I like is also that the mohair is so it's such a thin thread and I knit it with the same needle as the um, the sock yarn so um, the rainbows sort of shine through the yellow bit and I really really like that so um, yeah and I can put my hair into the hat as well if I want to then um, find it always a bit difficult to have the hair sticking out underneath the hat um, I'm not very comfortable with that but I love to just stuff it in there and then um, yeah this is my new sunshine hat <laughs> really really happy with it and I do think I need more hats in that style and with that pattern I, I'm thinking that maybe the next time I knit the pattern I might knit the um, the brim part in um, in a rip pattern so I'd have a rip pattern here and ribbing here not with the mohair if I do the mohair I don't think I'll knit ribbing with a mohair that doesn't really make sense because that won't be elastic but maybe if I do both halves in a sock weight yarn or sock yarn that might be fun a friend of mine is doing that and I really like the idea so I might just steal the idea from her and um, and do that okay let's put the gnomes back on there we go yeah so that was finished object number two number three are um, her socks so it's not technically a finished project because the project page is still open for his socks so basically it's just half a project <laughs> but it's a finished pair of socks so I'm going to show it um, in this part of the video. The pattern is called Treppenviertel Socks by um, Nicolor, by Nicola Susan. And um, here you can see the difference in the um, leg of the sock. So the, here the ribbing goes down to right before I started the heel. And here these um, the ribs going this way start it here and then they just keep getting wider until they come to a point here and that's when you reach this point that's when you start the heel and um, and then you just stick to the rib pattern on top of the foot and the sole is just knit in stockinette stitch and I I think I just knit my favorite toe it's probably not in the pattern but I think that's okay so these are her socks and I'll show his socks in a minute. But first, I'll show you my last finished object for today. And that's uh, the Viva Vittoria Square that I knit to donate. And last time I um, had already finished knitting this out a bit, but I um, decided to cut out the beginning of the square. And I finished, I, um, yeah, so I cut that out. Uh, I took photographs while I was doing that so if you're interested you can look on the project page of this project and you will see all the different pictures where I first cut into the yarn and then I undid uh, I pulled this yarn out and then you can see a picture of just the stitches and the middle that I placed next to it and then I picked up the stitches and I used the same yarn that I used for the outer edging to do the middle of the square and I think that sort of brings it nicely together. And, of, and um, most importantly, it's now lying flat. It doesn't have this uh, yeah, funny thing <laughs> sticking up in the middle. I washed it again and I blocked it again. And it's now almost perfectly 50 centimeters. And it's lying flat everywhere. And I'm really happy that I finished the second square that I want to donate to this organization who... Um, want to create attention um, to the topic of violence against women and they are going to you take four of those squares that people donated and then sew them together to little blankets and they will be laid out in a square in Darmstadt a German city and then afterwards they're going to sell the blankets and donate the money to help women who were victim to violence so that's what that's for. And that's the end of my finished objects. Yep, I showed you all four of them. And then on to works in progress. And the first one is the, um, the his socks. So her socks um, 
I used the color out of the Scharf Party series by Opal. It's where the yarn comes from, German sheep, and it's completely produced in Germany. So these were her, this is her color way, and this is the color way I'm using for his socks. So they're from the same series, but different colors. And I've knitted the cuff, and I've started this patterning where the stripes start going this way, the ribs, and um, yeah, not too much yet. I'm still a bit unsure with the size. I'm not sure if it's going to be too big because I'm knitting this, the neck size up. So I cast on eight more stitches, but I'm also using a bigger needle because all my 2.5 mini circular needles are busy. <laughs> and I'm a bit worried it might be too big. So I will have to do some measuring um, before I continue knitting but I thought I needed a bit of I needed to do a substantial bit of knitting to be able to measure it so that's what I did and then next time I'll let you know whether I continued this sock or started over yeah so that's the first sock then the next sock I'm going to show you are the knee-high socks that I'm knitting out of the um, book statement knitting the second book of the statement knitting series and um, that's a pattern where I sort of follow the recipe in the book but I'm choosing my own colors and I'm choosing my own patterns and I'm just dropping stitches so I'll just catch them quickly um, so this is one of the 2.5 circular needles <laughs> that's busy um, and this is a sock, the, the, this knee high sock started at the toe, so I finished the foot and then I knitted uh, several patterns in a color that doesn't have too much of contrast. But then I switched to this color and last time I showed you this little pattern and then I picked out this big pattern and this is where I put the first increases. So I've increased my number of stitches, then I did, I repeated this pattern. And then I finally um, started using the glitter yarn. Uh, it doesn't show a lot on screen. So this is the yarn I'm using. Shows a lot more in the yarn. This is my main color, what's left of it. And this is the, um, the glitter yarn I'm using at the moment. And I knit this pattern. And uh, I'm going to, I decided to do a little more with the glitter yarn, so I'll, I'll pick uh, another pattern that's not too high and then I'll have to see whether I um, I might repeat this yarn for the rest of the sock before I do the, um, the ribbing, but I don't know, I'll, I'll have to see, depending on which pattern I choose next, I'll have to um, try on again and see how far I, I've come and then decide when to start the ribbing. I'm still really, really happy with this sock. I, I just enjoy the different colors, the different patterns so much. And, and I just enjoy opening the book and just randomly pick a pattern. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I really enjoy that a lot. So that's that. I um, always put the yarn inside the sock um, when I'm not knitting on it. There's lots of space in there <laughs> to park the yarn. Okay, the next sock um, I cast on was the um, socks from the Icelandic socks book. Finished the first one, showed that to you last week and um, put some work into the second sock. So as with the first sock, I'm doing an afterthought heel. Oh, this nicely shows how much shorter the leg gets just by stretching it onto a sock blocker. So that's really interesting. So that was the experiment. I talk a lot about that in the last video, how um, this number of stitches with this pattern is supposed to fit a wide range of sizes. But I decided to do um, a German size 32, 33. Um, yeah, but with the first one, I did the, the heel first to decide on the size. But now that I've decided everything, I can just finish knitting the foot. I can knit the toe and then I can use the same needles to do the heel and I don't have to have two sets of double pointed needles in the same sock. <laughs> so this is a six ply sock yarn by Opal, Icelandic socks and the next pair of socks I'm going to knit from that book will definitely be a two color or multi-color 
uh, sock pattern from that book. So then there's only one, one more pair of socks that I'm knitting at the moment. And that's another birth, birthday present for my sister. And these are the film reel socks that I have decided to knit for every member of her family. Her younger son already has a pair. She's the next to have her birthday. So I finished the first sock. She tried it on. It fits her perfectly. So I'm really happy about that. I knit the afterthought heel. How much did I? I think last time I showed the sock, I, I just finished the third sort of film reel. So I, um, I think I finished all the film reels and then I knit the heel. Then I tried it on and then I knit the toe and then I let her try it on and fit her. And then I started knitting the second sock, but I haven't got very far. But um, I usually don't unwind um, any of the yarn to, to get to a certain place. Most people who wind off yarn do that to get to exactly the same socks. And I just did it to get to really different socks. So as you can see, this color sort of matches the color in this film reel because just before I finished the ribbing, uh, the bright pink appeared. So that means that the next two films should be really light colored and I'm looking forward to knitting those. And, uh, and I now have to get a move on because her birthday is already over and I have to knit another almost complete sock. Yeah, so that's the socks for today. Then on to um, other projects. Um, it's getting fairly warm. I don't want to take the hat off, so I'll take the shawl off. <laughs> um, the next sock weight or sock yarn project I am working on are the uh, mittens that I knit from the book. What's that book called? Um, Knit Like a Latvian, I think, is the English title. I finished the first one and I've almost finished the second one. The only thing I need to do is... Oh, yeah, I'm holding them the wrong way round. Uh, up, wrong side up. So this is the first one and the second one just needs the thumb, which is an afterthought thumb. <laughs> so I have to pick up the stitches and knit the thumb. Hope to get that finished. I'm pretty sure I'll finish that before the next video because that's going to be in two weeks time again. Um, yeah, so these are knit. The light color is a um, opal yarn and the dark yarn is the um, alpaca sock yarn by Hansa Farm, which is extremely soft and uh, it just makes for really soft mittens. Even though one of the yarns is a normal sock yarn, but just by having the alpaca yarn in there, um, as one of the colors makes them really soft and warm. And I knit them at a fairly small gauge. So they really, um, yeah, should be really warm and still soft because of the alpaca. That's that. And then we come to one more project out of sock yarn, small project out of sock yarn. And that's another new cast on. I cast on three new projects last week, but or the last two weeks. But with four finished objects, I think that's okay. And uh, as I finish my hat, I um, allowed myself to cast on a new hat. And I cast on the hat Westerly by Tin Can Knits. It's out of their new ebook, Lazy Sundays. And that's an ebook uh, for with cable patterns. And um, let me show you the yarn first. This is one of the new colors out of the eight ply. Um, Sock Yarns by Opal. This year's uh, collection is called Wilder Winter, which means Wild Winter. And this is one of the colors. I'll quickly show you the other colors as I like to show you um, new yarn colors that come into the shop. So this is sort of the men's color, a bit with blue and gray and a bit of green. It's a bit darker color. Then this is another color with um, lighter red and blue and a bit of yellow. And then there's this interesting color. I think this has a bit of a um, Halloween vibe with the, with the purple and the yellow, but it's another one of the brighter colors. And then the other three colors uh, in this year's series are um, a lot lighter. So they have sort of have white as the main color and then just these um, colors 
speckles and little stripes. So this is what the sock is supposed to look like when you knit the yarn. And this is one of the colorways. Then this is the second. And then there's another one that's sort of dyed in the same way. And that's this beautiful uh, pink, blue, red colorway. So these three are really, I think, very special. They're sort of a bit different from what they usually um, dye. And I really like them. And um, I will probably knit myself something out of one of those colors. But um, we'll see about that. But the first color that I did actually cast on is this dark color because I want it to have more um, hats in the shop that are suitable or will be picked up by men or boys. And um, this is the pattern that I talked about, the Westerly hat out of the Lazy Sundays collection by Tin Can Knits. And it has two different cables. One is these sort of three part cable and then this two part cable. And um, yeah, I think it looks quite nice. The colors in the yarn are not too busy, so you can still see the cables. I knit the size or the length of brim where you can turn up the brim because I like to have that. And um, yeah, the size is coming out a little smaller than I expected, but uh, that's because I didn't knit a gauge swatch. <laughs> and with cables, they just tend to pull in. And I thought there'd be more increases between the brim and the pattern. But I didn't read the pattern beforehand. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. The hat's not supposed to be for anybody special. So I'll just have to find someone who likes it and who fits the hat. And then the next one I, I knit, I can knit the bigger size. And as per usual with tin can knit patterns, you have a lot of sizes. You don't have the 17 sizes that you get with pullovers. But I think there are at least five different sizes for the hat. And then um, if you use a different yarn or different needle size, you get a lot more sizes than that so that's absolutely okay and now i'm getting cold i'll put the shawl back on um this is just part of my life at the moment getting hot and getting cold <laughs> okay so that was the hat um then on to shawls from um I'm knitting three shawls at the moment and the Chevrioni again was the one that I did not manage to pick up. It's uh, one of um, Romy's patterns. I'll talk more about it when I actually show the shawl. But I did knit on the Baltic Summer Shawl, which is a pattern by Martina Beam. And it has a lot of similarities with the um, Chevrioni shawl, but on the whole it's also very different. So this is the color that was chosen for um the current pattern battle and i chose this uh pattern by martina beam and it's called baltic summer and it holds, has all those sort of chevrons in the pattern and it has these funny edges and um last time i was talking about the pink stripes and how they get smaller and smaller last uh, time i filmed i was I'd finished knitting the third pink stripe. Now I did the fourth and I'm just about knitting the fifth. And right now I still have enough pink yarn to do a whole row or even a bit more, but we'll see how that uh, continues. I've just cast on new stitches here and um, on this edge, some stitches get bound off, some get decreased within the pattern. And then I um, make new stitches on this side. And then because of the pattern, uh, they sort of, uh, you get this, this triangle shape. Yeah, so this is, uh, by now I know the pattern by heart. So this is a project that I have lying around in my shop. And whenever I uh, just want to do a few stitches while talking or um, doing whatever, I'll just pick it up, knit a few stitches or a few rows, and then I put it down again. So um, it's quite a nice project for that, for some in-between knitting. Um, the other shawl that I continued knitting is the um, High Sierra shawl, another Romy pattern. And that um, with that shawl, I was knitting the lace, the last lace bit. So that was something that I did not want to 
pick up and put down all the time. So I uh, waited for a situation where I had a bit of time on hand and I finished the last bit of lace patterning. <laughs> it's difficult to show. Oh, I think this way you can see the lace pattern quite nicely. And if I hold the whole thing up, you can see there were several uh, lace patterns as this is a sort of modularly knit shawl, if that's how you say it. So this was the last time I knit on just half the stitches. And now I'm knitting uh, with all the stitches again, picked up new stitches out of the side of the lace pattern. And now I just have to knit more um, stripes. There's another stripe pattern. Don't know how many stripes are in the pattern. Um, yeah, but now, now this is one of those pick up and put down projects because I just have to knit the stripes and the normal um, increases, I think. With the normal, uh, with the original pattern, um, she asks or she calls for a mini set and you knit all the lace patterns in different colors. And I think with this last, last striped section, you repeat all the colors. So I think um, the main part of this last section will be which color to, to um, use when. And as I'm completely ignoring that, it would probably be just simple stripes. So looking forward to continuing on that. Then I brought two blankets today. So one of the blankets is the Talavera blanket and I've crocheted on that um, fairly regularly the last couple of weeks and months. And um, last time I showed it to you, I was still finishing this light blue round, but I had already started this darker blue round and I finished both of those rounds and started... Uh, let me check. Oh, this is... Um, Oh, I could show it this way. So I started the next round, which is the light blue again. And with that, I partly crochet on top of the dark blue round, but also into the, into the other light blue round. So I'm sort of filling the gaps that were there. So I created all those gaps when I crocheted this round. And now I'm filling in the gaps and crocheting up here. So it kind of looks as if I had crocheted with two colors at the same time, but I didn't um, by just crocheting into those uh, gaps. Uh, I can create this uh, two color round. And after that, um, I will probably crochet another three rounds. So I did want to finish the blanket fairly quickly now. So the next round in the pattern is supposed to be with the dark pink. And I will probably use the light pink for that round. Then there's a white round that I will actually do. And I will then do the last round of the pattern in the dark pink. So I will probably finish off in dark pink. Not 100% sure. Maybe I will just start um, the, the row with several. I will do several options to decide which colors to use. Because I might do the dark pink next, then the white. And then maybe one of the blue colors to finish off. I just can't make up my mind right now. So I started off with the two blue colors, even though the middle was supposed to be the light pink. And that's one of the reasons I might want to finish with the with one of the blue colors. If I look at the colors here, I might do the, the dark pink, a bit of white, and then the dark blue. I think this is one way of finishing it that I might like. But we'll see. I still have to finish this round and the rounds take a long time now as this blanket has grown to quite a size. Um, yeah, but that's part of the reason I want to get it done. Uh, I still don't know what to do with the blanket in the end. So um, I've decided it doesn't have to be too big and heavy if I don't even know what I want to do with it. So the other blanket that I brought is my All Memories blanket. Um, I haven't shown that in a long time. It's, it's always lying around at home and I always think I should knit on it and then I never do. But within the last two weeks, I finally sat down to do some work on the blanket. Let me just give you an 
overview of what it looks like at the moment. So the idea with this blanket was to, um, whenever I finish a project with sock yarn, I wanted to knit a square in this blanket to have um, something to remind me of the project. And uh, But now for the last couple of months, I've just been collecting leftover yarn without ever putting a square into the blanket. And um, yeah, I just wasn't happy with the situation. So I finally picked it up. Last time I showed it to you, I had knit those squares and now I added this one for the um, Halloween hat with the skeletons. That was the skeleton color. This is the color that I used for both the um, September and October gnome. So that, that was one was the uh, mystery gnome, uh, choose your gnome adventure. The smaller version had a green body and then last month's uh, gnome was the Here We Gnome Again Gnome with the many cables and he's completely knit in this green. And these two colors are the two colors that I knit socks out of. It was one of the um, patterns out of the uh, magazine with all the opal yarns in it. And um, that was another chevron pattern. And I really liked the socks a lot and I wanted to have the yarns in the blanket. And the next three colors that I would love to put in here not quite sure whether I should add it at this edge. Uh, of course, the colors from the pullover and the hat. Um, I think they probably look better at this end. I'm not supposed to do any planning. I'm just supposed to finish a project, put in a square, no matter what the colors look like together, but I can't really do that. Oh, and another, another thought, I'm thinking of deciding on the actual size of the blanket that I want it to have. I had no idea when I started, but now I have nine squares one direction and 10 squares the other direction. So I'll do these side with a nine square. So I have a 10 times 10 square blanket. And I'm, I'm not quite sure whether to go to 12 squares and then do it 12, 16 squares long or maybe just do 10 squares wide and 15 squares long. That will give me a ratio of two to three, which I think is quite nice for a sort of single blanket. And it might be a size that I could sort of use it as a big shawl or wearable blanket. I think if I make it a lot bigger than that, it'll be just too big to carry around. So I was, um, at the moment, I'm thinking of doing that as a finished size. But just an idea, I've not completely decided yet. So um, that's the blankets. I, now we're coming to the knit alongs. I haven't started another square for the Viva Vittoria um, happening, but I am planning one. So I hope next video I can show you the beginning of the next square. But I've uh, in last week's video where I did the I caught tutorial, I um, sort of started the next knit along saying, please knit uh, iCord projects if you want to with me and show them in the Ravelry group. And I will also knit hopefully several um, iCord projects. So far I've only cast on one and that's an iCord uh, scarf. And I'm using this six ply yarn by Opal out of the Shaf Parter series. So as I said, Shaf Parter um, are yarns made from German sheep who live in Germany and the yarns completely produced in Germany and um, they, they're usually only available in the four ply in the sock weight sock yarn but one year they did a six ply series and I just love the yarn. Um, there used to be six colors. I have a few remaining balls of the that's those three colors so three colors are still left and um, yeah, and I started knitting a scarf for my husband. So I cast on the stitches with an eye cord and then I continue the eye cord on both sides as the salvage stitches and I'm knitting a brioche pattern in between. And um, yeah, it's just going to be a very simple scarf. It's another very simple in between uh, pick up and put down project. And um, I'm pretty sure he'll like the colors. And this is the first scarf I'm knitting him. So <laughs> I've been.
been married with uh, to him for a long time, but now finally I'm knitting him a scarf. And um, I can tell that in the video because he never watches the videos. He um, he does do all the work with uh, putting the beginning and end on, and he uh, puts the the um, so I'm recording the video and the audio in, with two different machines <laughs> and he puts the audio and the video together and he, he puts it up on, on YouTube and all those things. Uh, I have no idea how these things work, but he never actually watches the rest of the video. So I'm very safe telling you all that here. Yeah, so that's everything. I knit and crochet the last two weeks. Um, next Monday, I won't be here so i can't do a video so the next proper episode will um come in two weeks time i might uh record a special video for next week but i'm not a hundred percent sure yet so i won't promise um maybe there'll be a video maybe not but in two weeks time there will definitely be the um, next proper episode unless something happens that i don't know about yet <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll say I'll see you in the next one. Bye.